if I had to pick the one medical condition that brings the greatest amount of agony for middle-aged women, it would be menopause, period. Mood changes, weight gain, vaginal dryness, but by far the symptom to wreak the greatest havoc is hot flashes, which is experienced by 80% of menopausal women, and it can last up to 10 years, or even more in few unlucky women. But don't sweat it, because in this episode, I'm gonna review the top treatment options that we currently have to combat these nasty hot flashes. Like your periods, you don't wanna miss this. If it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Madge. Consider subscribing to this channel for up-to-date medical topics and headlines. Now, blood tests are often unnecessary to diagnose menopause, as menopause itself is actually defined as 12 consecutive months without vaginal bleeding in menopausal aged women. And average age of menopause in the US is 51. All right, so let's start with hormonal replacement therapy, or HRT for short. It's a topic that I've covered in much greater detail prior but with increasing evidence of its risks, many women are reluctant to embrace it, and with good reason, because risks of HRT are not for the faint of heart, no pun intended, as they include a slight increased risk of heart attacks, strokes, blood clots, and even breast cancer in women who take it. I mean, potentially very serious stuff. But not to say that it's not a good option for some. I mean, the pros of the treatment really must be carefully reviewed against the cons, because I mean, truthfully, no other treatment is quite as miraculously effective as HRT. So for those with severe hot flashes without cardiovascular risk factors, like history of heart attack or stroke or hypertension or diabetes, non-smokers, HRT really can be a solid consideration. But for everyone else, there are other alternatives available. Note that the goal may not be to necessarily strive for like a cure-all, but simply to just improve your quality of life and functioning. To start, as always, those of you who watch my videos or are my patients know that I have zero contact with pharmas, both inside and outside of my practice, and I have very strong views about that. Also, the treatment options that I present here are all generics, lower cost medications, nothing brand, and this video is certainly not sponsored in any way. With that said, let's go. So first of all, antidepressants. They are the first line group of non-hormonal drugs that are used to treat hot flashes. For those with a mood component to menopause, it actually may serve as an extra added benefit as well. Mood changes during menopause are quite common. One antidepressant, paroxetine, has actually been FDA approved for hot flashes at a very low dose of 7.5 milligrams. However, it is currently available only as brand at this particular dose and it's marketed only for hot flashes and it's hence costly, you got it. The good news is that it's available as a very inexpensive generic at a dose of 10 milligrams that is marketed as an antidepressant. Yes, same drug, just a smidgen higher in dose, so 7.5 milligrams versus 10. So sneaky, right? It should not be taken by women who get hot flashes due to tamoxifen, however, which is a chemotherapy drug that's used to treat breast cancer and actually can cause hot flashes in and of itself. Other antidepressants have also been studied for hot flashes, and examples include citalopram, escitalopram, and venlafaxine, all available as inexpensive generics. One trial of 339 women found that venlafaxine 75 milligrams extended release was as effective as low dose estradiol in relieving hot flashes. Estradiol is estrogen. And I personally have seen some patients do very well with venlafaxine in my practice while treating hot flashes. But it can raise blood pressure levels in those who are prone, so make sure that you're monitoring that as you go along with the treatment. The other listed antidepressants are also very solid options. Next, gabapentin. It is originally an anti-seizure drug that is used for multiple other neurologic indications such as diabetic uh, neuropathy, restless leg syndrome, and neuropathy like due to shingles. Although second line, they may be considered first line in those who experience the hot flashes only at night because it can be taken as a single bedtime dose. And it may be taken during the daytime as well, although it can cause sleepiness in many people, which limits its daytime use. Next, oxybutynin. Oxybutynin is an anticholinergic agent, which just really means that it blocks certain chemicals in the brain that regulate certain functions, 
one of which is involuntary muscle activity. It's used to treat urinary incontinence by controlling bladder muscle spasms of all things. But one of its side effects has been diminished sweating that's been reported by people who took it. And then further research has shown that it actually may help reduce hot flashes in menopausal women. Side effects may include things like dry mouth and constipation and headaches, but it's less common in the extended release version of the drug. Clonidine. Now this is a prescription drug that calms down the nervous system and has been used to treat hypertension. It is a third line non-hormonal option though because the side effects may make it more difficult to tolerate and it's usually more than the other groups of drugs and they include things like dizziness, constipation, and dry mouth as well. Its skin patch version may be better tolerated however since it produces like a steady level of the drug inside our bloodstreams but also caution that it lowers blood pressure. Now complementary alternative therapy options to treat hot flashes, especially supplements, have surely brought great financial gain to the vitamin industry throughout the years. However, there is very limited data available to prove their effectiveness and the placebo effect really is thought to be the main way that they actually function and work. Also because they're not FDA approved, we really don't have an accurate risk profile. And this is something that I've said like over and over in my videos and in my articles that just because something is labeled as natural, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually any safer. So take great caution if you do decide to explore these options, but here's a quick review. First of all, phytoestrogens. This is the term for the naturally occurring plant hormone that is structurally similar to estrogen and is present in numerous plant-based foods such as soybeans, flaxseed, lentils, chickpeas, fruits, and some veggies even. Isoflavone is the one example that you'll see contained in various dietary supplements marketed for hot flashes that you can buy at the vitamin store or drugstore. However, most studies have not shown significant benefit. Not too much hot flash fight put up by the phytos. Herbal supplements. Now black cohosh is perhaps the most promoted herbal supplement marketed for hot flashes, but again, Studies have not shown it to contain any greater benefit than placebo. Black cohosh more like hogwash? I mean, we just really don't know. Also, it's suggested risk of liver toxicity and its effect on breast tissue in breast cancer women have been controversial. Now, evening primrose oil is another alternative, but with even less data to confirm its efficacy. Low-dose vitamin E, but at no more than 400 international units a day. Beware, because vitamin D does actually have a toxicity level at higher doses and has just overall been linked to increased bleeding risk and just overall what we call all-cause mortality. It's been suggested, so not so pretty to think about. Now, I don't typically recommend any of these options to my own patients personally and won't be until we have just more evidence behind their claims and a better risk profile. Other alternative options with some evidence but still requiring further investigations include things like cognitive behavioral therapy, or we call it CBT, hypnosis, and mindfulness techniques. This is something free that you can look up on the internet. Pretty easy to uh, dig into. Give it a try. Bioidentical hormones. Now they are perhaps the latest menopause fad to gain media attention. But we also don't know how safe or effective they are either. Sorry, I keep like bursting you guys' bubble <laughs> in this video <laughs> with a lot of the options, but it's just the truth. The term bioidentical refers to individually customized compounds for you that appear structurally similar to estrogen and likely bind to the same receptors on our cells and they function similarly. And they're labeled as natural because they are derived from plants or animals, however, they must still be processed to some degree in order to be utilized in this way. I mean, let's not get fooled by all of this. Expert groups argue that they very likely pose the same risks as estrogen since they mimic it and hence are not necessarily any safer. They're also not FDA approved and we don't have well accepted evidence to back up their safety or, un or understand their risk profiles. <laughs> Now I seem like a broken record, don't I? I know, even to myself saying this out loud. But hopefully it's helpful. All right, so note that those with just mild hot flashes don't necessarily need treatment at all. I mean, only certain behavioral changes, such as, let's say, turning on the fan or lowering the room temperature or using cool bed sheets. 
weight loss if you're overweight, dressing in layers for more tighter temperature control, and avoiding those triggers. So triggers may include things like stress for some people, anxiety, even certain foods like spicy foods and a high carb diet. Obtaining regular exercise has also been suggested to help combat hot flashes. So many reasons to maintain a healthy lifestyle. In summary, this is a common conversation that I have in my practice treating menopausal women. And I really wanted to make this video for all of you to raise awareness that HRT really is not the sole option to treat hot flashes. Although yes, perhaps the most effective option available to date, I give it that. But I truly hope that this video has helped you understand your options and armed you with the information that you need to help combat this potentially debilitating condition. Period. The end. I couldn't help myself. If you found the information valuable, which is always my goal, please give it a like, consider subscribing to my channel, and hit that notification bell next to it so that you don't miss any of my future video releases. And please feel free to share it with someone else who may be suffering from hot flashes who may also find it useful. Thanks for tuning in. Stay sweat free and I'll catch you next time.